Now that we've covered the basics of some security and authentication and channels, now let's go into something slightly different where we talk about local connections and remote connections. So we've already talked about this, so I'm not going to go into lots and lots of detail, but we do know that there is a difference between a local connection and a remote one and a remote connection. Clearly, this is a remote connection, right? There's a list. First of all, there are two machines involved. I'm going to make the assumption here that this is a VM one. Let's say that it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I'm going to make the assumption that this is actually running on VM two. And this particular one will also be, let's say, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And these machines are going to have their own operating system list of users. We're going to come back to this idea in a minute, but they're going to have a some set of, of users. And, and so will this one, they'll both have some set of, of OS based users, and they may not share the same uh, set, they may not both, for example, be connected to some intermediary uh, LDAP server. We'll come back to this idea. But the, but anyway, the point is that this could have a separate set of users from this one over here. Okay, so the question here now is, what happens when we have local connections versus remote connections? So, so this is obviously remote, this is remote. What happens in the case of local? Well, we haven't really talked about that. A local connection, so if you have, you know, Q1 here, and let's call it one, and then we have Q2, this is very, very different when these two communicate to each other than when this one tries to communicate with this one. They're very different sorts of, of things. It's much more complicated to go uh, do a remote connection. So in the case of this local connection between these two, what happens is something called bindings. And bindings simply means that the queue manager connections that will arrive over shared memory as opposed to the network that is a binding and that's sometimes called bindings mode and the way this works from a security standpoint is that the connections will share process ids or at least they will sh share the same memory so what do i mean by that well just very quickly if you have process one running here and we have process two running out here but they're both running on the same VM, then they're both able to connect to a shared set of RAM addresses. This is shared. And when they're shared like that, this can make a connection in, this can make a connection in, and that's how they're sharing the RAM, which means that, and, and by process, I really mean something that's going to be basically a dot exe, right? So something that's running, some application that's running, and it's running this process, and they're both able to, to access the same uh, shared RAM. And what I mean in particular is that whatever, however this is working, this represents Q1, or will connect into Q1, really uh, like this, and this will be Q2 in, in, in actual practice. So this is, this is the bindings mode that's happening. They're sharing the RAM and the, it is the processor that's handling the security that says, well, if this can even run, then, and this can run, then from a security standpoint, uh, I'm going to sort of allow it. It's going through the shared RAM bindings mode. Okay, and there is much more detail about that uh, in the MQ 7.5, the secure messaging scenarios with WebSphere MQ book. Okay, and also on the Knowledge Center. Now, so that's bindings mode. That's basically the point is that that's local. You have local connections. That is a possibility. Um, it's when you do remote that's not just more complicated from a network standpoint, but it's also more complicated from a security standpoint. And the way this, the reason it is more complicated from an authentication standpoint is that there is, more, like I was talking about before, there are users here and there are users here. Now let's take the example not of a QM to A to a QMB, but of the MQI, where again, I'm, this represents some sort of operating system. So let's say that this is Windows. And again, it's going to have its own users. They, now that could be, a, and it's actually going to be in most cases, a local set of users. But of course, you could be running on a domain. 
And in either case, the users here, or LDAP, of course, which is really sort of the same idea, uh, so it's going to have its own set of users here. But then again, so is this VM going to potentially have its own set of users. There will be shared set of uh, shared set of users if you're using LDAP. But if they're not, then if this is if this machine is running A, this is running the actual application here as a, an account called administrator. And what you want to do is get into this channel here. And that particular channel is running as MQM, because MQM is one of the users listed here in its OS. Then you have to do something to get administrator here to connect to MQM M here. In other words, you need to map them. And indeed, that is what's going to happen when you s set up your security at the channel level. You have to map these two together. So how does that happen? Well, it's actually very, very close to this. So let's just return to this idea very quickly. When you have this process one running, the connection over to this second process is going to happen by looking at who is running this process right here. And this is important because basically with the bindings mode connection, the identity that is associated with the connection is the operating system identity of the connected process. So whatever this, whatever this is right here, that if it's MQM, for example, then it'll try, then MQM is going, is going to, this is going to be MQM running here because it started here, right? So MQM is going to say, hey, I'm gonna kick off this and that will also run as MQM. So this is sort of the basis for answering our question earlier about remote stuff. So the difference in remote is that, you know, again, here we have the same operating system. So, you know, the same user here is exactly, whatever user this is, is going to exist on the same machine with the same credentials, with the same PID, all the important stuff is, is already here in the, in the case of, you know, this is again, remember, this is local. But it, when we go back to this example here of these remote connections, things are more complicated. And by that, of course, I mean that we need to somehow do this mapping. And essentially the, the mapping is going to happen through this MCA. Let me, let me explain what I mean by that. So first of all, uh, let's clean this up a little bit. In the case of our client application here, when we are saying that administrator is going to be connecting, we when we do the mapping, we're going to, first of all, do this. We're going to go from MQI into the listener, from the listener into MQI, from MQI into the channel. And this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to do the mapping right here on the channel on what's called a channel authentication record. And the mapping happens because of MCA. What do I mean by that? Well, although we've made this connection in like this, because you are doing security, you're doing security on the channel, the channel is actually going to look at the properties of something in the definition of the channel called MCA. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But the point is that the channel itself is going to interrogate its own de definition, the way it was defined. And there will be in that definition a reference to MCA. And the way that works is it's going to have an, a, a name, a username in that definition. And so if that is MQM, what it means is that the channel is going to, when it starts up, it's going to use the authentic, the authenticity, authentic, the credentials of, it's going to use the username and the password of MQM to start. That's the default. But then once the administrator has connected um, over to that channel, then at the channel level, the channel can rewrite whoever MQM was and put in 
whatever you want here. So you could say, well, I know it's administrator here, but that has its own usernames and passwords because it's on Windows. Well, I want to map the administrator over to some other account, and you could call that account X, Y, Z, for example. And then what'll happen is, although this channel started up with MQM, it will be replaced by X, Y, Z. And of course, once that happens, you, your channel is going to be running under completely different credentials than, than the default. And you might be wondering, well, why on earth? That sounds very complicated. But it, there's actually a reason for it that's pretty good, which is that if, you, if you're trying to run this channel as, as XYZ here, then, or sorry, as MQM, and then all of a sudden, somebody, uh, I mean, you know you want to run it as XYZ once it's actually going. But let's say someone, like a few months from now, deletes this account. Well, what, what is the default credentials that well, this is going to run as? And you want that to be something safe. And MQM, it turns out, is, can be fairly safe, especially because you can, pre you can prevent MQM, which is an administrator account, the main administrator account for MQ. You can prevent it from having any real access to that channel. So in other words, if someone comes along <clears throat> and deletes your XYZ account, it'll, it'll default back to whatever it started out as, which was MQM, and that can have very, very little uh, control or access to the system.